me get to where I can see you guys. Um, is that it? Is that it? Is that it? Is that it? There we go. But this is not the right one. Hi, everybody. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Kevin. Hi, uh, Heart Made Wise. Hi, Ashley. Uh, let me just get to the right the one that I can control here. Yeah. Hope you're all doing well. Sorry I was a little late, but uh, and not, I'm not late. I'm not late getting started. I mean, coming on a little later than I said. That was just we had to straighten some stuff out with um, flights and things. Took a little longer. And then anticipated, but I'm still here. Okay, let me go here. We're going to talk about what you see up there and probably more. Let me just get into the chat over here. Okay, I'm here now. So, let's see. Pie pudding. Pudding, how are you? Everybody's good? Okay, let's, uh, this is crazy because we were just talking about it last night. All these parents, I mean, all these kids killing their parents, right? You had the nine-year-old killed their parent, and now we have another a teenager, 14 year old, killed her mother. That's her mother pictured there. That's a 40 year old woman. And then uh, injured the stepfather. Then we're going to talk about a missing California woman. And it's it's so weird because the first woman and the second woman look like people I know in my real life. But um, okay, this missing California woman, her car was found in an Arizona desert. Where is she, right? Then we've got look, just so many missing people, right? And how do they just go missing? without a trace, you know? I mean, you can look at um, pages of, of like lost animals and there are spottings and sightings, right? And it's amazing how many animals they they find and, you know, happy endings. But somebody saw them somewhere. Oh, I saw, you know, this dog at such and such a place. So this dog at such and such. How do these people just go missing and there's no trace? This is a person and there and there's no trace and that makes you think then you say gosh if there's no trace then maybe they're not you know well like Riley Strain we know he was on the street when he went missing right but other kids that go missing like um, you just got thinking you think, well, maybe they never walked out of their house, right? Maybe they were carried out of their house. Maybe, you know, and then you've got that scenario. But, you know, it's just, it's it's crazy, isn't it? It's just absolutely crazy when you think about it. How does someone just disappear into thin air? Do they? So a lot of times, yeah, a missing person may not really be missing. They may be take it out right and then like like Madeline Soto she didn't walk to school she did that all of that was all fake okay she was already dead she was in the car and then she was dropped off somewhere so you have to think about that too because with all of the cameras and all of the technology how does someone just go missing without a trace without someone seeing them. It's crazy. It's crazy. Well, let's talk about this. Um, I think we'll talk about the Mississippi mother that was killed by the 14-year-old. I can't even type tonight. Okay, so let's look over here. Okay, this is the mugshot. 
of the daughter that killed her mother. Fourteen years old. She is now in the Rankin County Adult Detention Center. And she has been certified as an adult. She's been transferred to the Rankin County Adult Detention Center. She'll have an initial appearance. Uh, it was, yes, let me see what day it was. When did she have an appearance? On the 20th. She was, let's see here. I think she's got a, a million dollars bond. She pled not guilty. Her name is Carly Madison Gregg. Carly Gregg, that even sounds familiar to me. So she appeared um, before Judge Morrow. Okay, and let's see what happened. The Rankin County Coroner, David Ruth, identified the victim as Ashley Smiley. I thought they said her name was something else. I just read that. She was a teacher in the Rankin County School District. So Sheriff Brian Bailey put a press release out around 5.07 p.m. that they received a call reporting a shooting that had occurred at the 200 block of Ashton Way. Several deputies, along with Reservoir Fire Department and Pafford Ambulance Service, responded. When they were on the scene, the deputies met with the male owner of the residence, who was suffering from a gunshot wound to the shoulder. The male victim told police that he arrived home and found his wife shot to death inside the home, and he found his 14-year-old stepdaughter armed with a pistol. The victim said that the suspect shot him in the shoulder. The stepfather and the stepdaughter had a brief physical fight, and he took the weapon from her. He told investigators then she ran into the backyard and jumped over a fence. Additional deputies responded to the area with the Mississippi Highway Patrol's helicopters. And that was 5.35 p.m. That's when she was located, not far from the residence, and they took her into custody without an incident. Based on the circumstances and the evidence of the scene, the teenager was placed under arrest for murder and attempted murder. She was transported to the Rankin County Juvenile Detention Center. Let's see. The district attorney, Bubba Bramlett, Bubba, has been made aware of the case. The Rankin County investigators are still on the scene processing it for evidence. The investigation is ongoing. Okay, let's see here. See what else we can find out. Hang on. Let me see if she had a social media presence. Not one. Just a second. So let's see if she had some kind. I thought I read her name was different a moment ago that's so weird but the mother's name I mean let's see Carly Madison Gregg that name sounds so familiar Ashley Smiley I thought I just read that. I just want to say something because I feel like I'm losing my mind. I feel like I, she had a different name when I just went over this a minute ago by myself. Oh, maybe it was. Okay. She with the the uh, victim is forty years old. Over here, and 
And uh, let's see here. A neighbor, Lauren Martinez, said, and I quote, you can't fathom those kind of thoughts. You just wouldn't think the child would do anything like this. It just feels like there's something missing. There's something wrong. It's like a level of caution that you don't think something like that will happen. Now, Ashley Smiley was a math teacher at Northwest Rankin High School where her daughter was also a student. So she was a math teacher. Just think about the kids there. Their math teacher is killed and student that they went to school, you know, killed the math teacher, their mother. I just try to fathom all this. It's unbelievable. Um, So there is the math teacher uh, that was killed by the daughter. All right. And I'm going to get to see who had a social media presence here. Okay. So math teacher Ashley Smiley shot dead. The teenager, okay, I'm trying to see if they have, let's just see if we can get anything out of the comments here. And there's quite a few comments here on social media. You know, sometimes you hear people that knew something. Um, So, this is said. A lot of them are saying it's such a tragedy. The family needs a lot of prayers. The truth will probably never come out because the one person that really knows what happened is dead. It's so sad. So sorry. Life is not much. She'll we'll probably get out in twenty years. Everyone is quick to judge on everything. You don't know what goes on in a family relationship. People can act one way in public, totally different in private. There was clearly something wrong in the family dynamic that was going on long before this, praying for all of this family. Uh, let's see. I'm not seeing anybody that say that. We knew them or anything yet. Let me see here. For a 14-year-old child to do this, there is a much scarier story behind it. There's no telling what this poor child has been subjected to. I am in no means justifying what she did. Okay, let's see here. Uh, gun should have been under lock and key. Stepdad should be charged with some kind of negligence. Um, I'm not seeing a lot there. Let me see here. There's some more. There is a story that has not been told. How do I know I was a stepchild and treated as such, going to church every time the doors opened, looking perfect in every way? People thought we were the Brady Bunch. We were anything but. I'll pray for this child. Um, and they said, why do, we, why do people assume that our mother and stepfather did anything wrong? Maybe the full story will come out. Okay, let's see.
I'm not finding anyone that usually you find people that say they knew them or they lived around there. I'm not finding any comments yet so far of anybody saying that, but there's still a lot to go through. Let me see. Carly. All right, let's look for the mother, Ashley Smiley. Okay, so here is someone that knew, let me see, her cousin posted something, let me see here. says, former Warren Central educator Ashley Smiley was shot and killed in her Rankin County home last night. According to the father, Smiley was killed by her 14-year-old daughter. According to numerous reports, the daughter shot and killed the mother at their home on Ashton Way in the Farmington Station subdivision in Brandon. Just after 5 p.m., the father... See, it says the father of the 14-year-old girl, but it was the stepfather arrived home to find his wife deceased from a gunshot wound. The daughter had the gun and shot the stepfather in the shoulder. He was able to wrestle the weapon away from the daughter, who then fled from the home. About 30 minutes later, law, enforce, law enforcement found the daughter near the home. She was taken in, into custody. Okay. Okay, so here, here comes something. Someone said, coming from a parent of a child that attends this school, there is nothing fishy about this story. These kids have a lot of unanswered questions, but I can tell you it's sad, and this community is feeling the effects of it. This is not easy on the students or faculty of the school. Here's another one. Let's see what we can find here. Oh, let's see. I just say I'd like to hear the whole story. Let's see, I 
another one. Uh, there's not a lot of people that, other than that one cousin. Um, Okay, here's something else. Such an awful scene. What could have pushed a 14-year-old to do this? Person, family, full details. Okay. I'm just trying to see if anybody has anything. Is it probably over a boyfriend? I don't see any. It's so weird. Usually there's always somebody saying that, oh, they know them and this or that. It was about you just like, I'm just so shocked that there's nothing. Let's see here. Mississippi, Ashley Smiley. Mm. Carly, Madison, Craig. Another thing here, what went wrong? <coughs> Near Jackson, Mississippi, no known motive, they say. Let me see here. The stepfather is Heath. Smiley, 38 years old. He's only 38. Let me see that. Hold on a second. Um, She looks a little uh, older to me than 40, but I, like I said, terrible uh, judges uh, of age. But, I don't even know when that picture was from. But I'm gonna see about There's anything about the stepfather. Uh, 
Heath Smiley. So let's see. Maybe there's something about that. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. My computer's taking a minute here. It needs a moment. It's very verklempt. It's quite verklempt. Okay, here we go. Uh-oh, don't get scared. Don't get scared. I'm still here. It's just being a little jerk. Don't get scared. Don't get scared. Don't get scared. Okay, we're back. All right, let's see here. Okay. I'm going to do the life support thing now. Oh my gosh. Just hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I've got to paint again. I've got to paint again. All right, it's being it's being a little jerk. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut down Chrome because it really is being a jerk. I'm going to restart it. Okay, there we are. We restart this and I'm not going to have any tabs open except the tab that I'm using. Come on. Come on. Okay. There it goes over there. Get over here. Get over here. All right, let's go over here. Here we go. And this will be I was looking up Heath. Okay.
not, I'm not finding a, uh, isn't that weird? Okay, let's see. How about... Okay, let's see here. Okay, so someone said, it's been nearly 24 hours and neither Northwest Rankin High School or Rankin County School District district can be bothered to post any sort of sympathy on their pages. The middle school and district failed to do this when sixth grader Liam lost his life earlier this school year. As a parent of children at these schools, it is disheartening. They do not have to weigh into the facts or circumstances, but when a faculty, staff, or student loses their life suddenly and tragically, they should, they could and should at least acknowledge it. The low morale and lack of community is showing. Okay. There's really not much known about I'm just so shocked that there's not more. Okay, let me see something here. Nothing comes out with the, the, the stepfather's name at all. Okay. No, I'm not getting uh, absolutely anything even about the murder here. Wait a second, there must be something weird. Hold on a minute. How come that's not bringing up anything now? This is Ashley Smiley. Very odd because what are they doing? They're taking stuff down or something? I don't know. I don't know. 
I don't know, it's crazy that There's not a lot going, there's not a lot out there about that. Okay, let's go to the next thing. I don't even know if you guys are still here. Let me just check you if you are because I haven't even been, I have to open up YouTube again. All right, we're in. Got a lot more to look at, so I better get going, I guess. Alright. Back in. Alright, there you guys are. Okay. Hi Sandra, the world's going crazy, right? Absolutely. Um Christina, good to see you. Who snuck in here while I was over there? Mr. Electric, hi. Ashley Vestal Pudding, everybody there, hi. All right, now to the next one. Let's look at the missing California woman in her car who's in the Arizona desert, okay? Okay. So Amanda Nenegar is this woman right here. 27 years old. She was last seen in Blythe, California on February 28th, and her car was found abandoned in a remote area of La Paz County in Arizona. That almost sounds like that that other woman that was trying to drive across country for the wedding, right? Something, and her car was found. The rear end of the vehicle was on a large boulder. Authorities are searching for a 27-year-old woman who has been missing for three weeks. Amanda Nenegar was last seen in Blythe, California. Her car was found in a remote area of Arizona La Paz County, south of Chibola. She was last seen wearing a pink hooded sweatshirt, black leggings, black and white tennis shoes, and a thin bracelet carrying a pink purse. Okay. She lives in near Blythe, but she commutes to La Paz County where other family members live. After her family reported her missing, a week later her Toyota Camry was reportedly found by loved ones in a remote desert area. The way the car was found is puzzling, according to... Uh, let's see. Yes, puns. Um, investigators determined that Nenegar called 911 on February 28th after getting stuck in a ditch, but it was not clear where her car was later found. When you have a vehicle that's abandoned and you don't have any kind of inkling where the person has gone or anything, it all seems very odd, the sheriff said. We have no information at all. It's very mysterious to us. That's why we're asking for the public's health help to try to find her and give us any information that may lead to where she's at. Her family released a statement to the outlet that relayed a message to the 27-year-old. She could be out there lost. She hasn't connected to any phone since she called 911. Her family misses her, and if she hears this, do whatever she can to come home. Anyone with information is asked to contact the La Paz County Sheriff's Office at 928-669-6141. Okay, so I don't know. Um... who was month shy of second birthday dead after being hit by an Uber driver. Wow. It's horrible. Okay, let's finish with this woman right here and see what we can find here. Amanda Nenegar. Let's see if she has anything on there. Amanda Nenegar. Live 
lives in quite a few of them in the corner. This is one lives in. Uh, this is her. Okay, here's her Facebook page. Um, she posted something February. But it's really locked down tight, so. I don't know. Uh, just some other photos of her. Uh, where'd the photo go? But. Where is she, right? Maybe if somebody sees her. Maybe they'll see her with this hope she's found. Okay, now we're going to talk about Riley Strain. He said his mother was his favorite person before he disappeared. So a family friend, Chris Dingman, told Nancy Grace that Riley Strain, 22, told his mother she was his favorite person during their last conversation that they had together. Strain was with friends in Nashville for a fraternity conference on March 8th when he vanished. Dingman also claimed that on the night of his disappearance, a friend texted him asking if he was having a good time, to which he responded, good lops. The meaning of that text remains unclear. Good lops. And the source said, if you've ever communicated with Riley, the kid was extremely punctual even if he had a few beers in him he never used speech to text the correspondence was really odd reports indicated that strain was kicked out of luke bryan's bar in nashville because the staff believed he had too much to drink and the tennessee alcohol beverage commission is investigating whether the bar overserved him the night of his march 8th disappearance however the bar said they only served him one drink the bar said that one of his friends walked down the stairs with him as he was escorted from the premises, but went back upstairs as Strain left. Strain's friends reportedly closed their tabs at the bar and left, only to realize that he was missing. A follow-up 911 call suggests that the initial call to 911 was placed on Saturday afternoon, 16 hours after he was last seen. At some point, his friends tried to report him missing at a police precinct in Davidson County. Now, see, they describe him as six foot five. Others describe him as six foot seven, 160 pounds, blue eyes, blonde hair, last seen wearing a brown button up shirt with a black chest pocket, blue jeans, brown boots, and a black Apple Watch. Why can't that Apple Watch track him, huh? Right? It's crazy. Okay, so that's it. There's not much more on that. And. Sebastian Rogers, another one missing without a trace there. As the mystery of Sebastian Rogers' disappearance deepens, his father Seth Rogers spoke to Nancy Grace, and his father said that his son did not take his cell phone, which he was super attached to when he vanished from his Henderson home on February 16th, where he lives with his mother and his stepfather. It's one of several things the father found alarming about his son's disappearance. And I quote him saying, look at his picture, keep your head up. 
I'm missing something. The puzzle doesn't make sense. I have a missing piece. Not many details have been put out there since his disappearance. Searchers have found no sign of Sebastian, and search and rescue dogs have not picked up his scent. Searches of a Kentucky landfill where the family's trash is didn't produce any evidence or, lead, or leads. Sebastian also vanished while barefoot. His father said his son three pairs of shoes were found at the front door and he typically only goes outside at night to take the trash out and he always has his shoes or slippers on. The father said that his son is autistic and lacking in certain social skills but he's very intelligent and never broke his routine. Something doesn't add up, he said. For him to break routine, it doesn't make sense. And a forensic psychologist, Dr. Shari Schwartz, said that his uh, shoes being accounted for is an important clue since it deviates from his normal routine of never leaving home without having his shoes on. I want everybody to see my kid and know that he's missing. I need my son back, Seth said. Um, he's described as a white male, 5'5", five, five, weighs 106 to 108 pounds. He has dirty blonde hair and was last seen wearing a black sweatshirt and black sweatpants. His flashlight keychain is unaccounted for. I want everybody to see my son and know that he's missing. I need my son back. Anyone with information regarding... Sebastian Rogers' whereabouts could call the Sumner County Sheriff's Office at 615-451-3838 or the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation at 1-800-TBI-FIND. Okay. Where's they're all found? Oh, gosh, all the missing people. All right, let's see now what else we have here. So we did, we covered all of our stories, and let's see if there's anything else we want to go over. Hold on. Okay. Oh my goodness, my goodness. What happened here? Uh, okay, I'm just looking at something that they're saying about uh, Kate, that somebody was trying to look into her medical records. I don't know what they're doing here. Okay. Anyway, I have no idea. I'm not going to get into that. I just it's too too much. I, I know. I get enough of my own life to worry about. Okay, let's see. In George's first execution in years, a man who killed his ex-girlfriend is put to death. Let's look at this. Uh-huh. 
that sounded like someone was walking around in here. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, let's see. William James Pye, 59, received an injection of the sedative pentobarbital and was pronounced dead at 11.03 p.m. at the state prison in Jackson, Georgia. He was sentenced to die for his conviction in the November 1993 abduction, R, and shooting death of Alicia Lynn Yarborough. His lawyers filed appeals urging the U.S. Supreme Court to step in, but the justices unanimously declined to stop the execution. His defense team argued that the state had not met necessary conditions for resuming executions after COVID limitations were imposed and that Pi was ineligible for execution because of an intellectual disability. State responses argued that the claims had been previously settled by the courts and were without merit. Pi had been in an on-again, off-again relationship with Yarborough, but at the time she was killed, she was living with another man. Pi, Chester Adams, and a 15-year-old had planned to rob a man and bought a handgun before heading to a party in a nearby town. The three left the party around midnight and went to the house where Yarborough lived, and they found her alone with her baby. They forced their way into her house, and they stole a ring and a necklace, and they forced her to go with them, leaving the baby alone. The group drove to a motel where they are Yarborough, and they left the motel with her in the car. They turned onto a dirt road, and Pi ordered Yarborough out of the car, made her lie face down, and shot her three times. Her body was found November 17, 1993, a few hours after she was killed. Adams and the teenager were quickly arrested. Pi and Adams denied knowing anything about Yarborough's death, but the teenager confessed and implicated the other two. The teenager reached a plea agreement with prosecutors and was the main witness at Pye's trial. A jury in June of 96 found him guilty of murder, kidnapping, armed robbery, R and burglary, and they sentenced him to death. His lawyers argued in court papers that prosecutors relied heavily on the teenager's testimony, but that he later gave inconsistent statements. What the heck? Um... The filings contended that such statements as well as Pye's testimony indicated that Yarborough left the home willingly and went to the motel to trade S for drugs. Lawyers representing him also wrote in previous court filings that their client was raised in extreme poverty and that his childhood was characterized by neglect and abuse by family members who were often drunk. His lawyers also argued that he suffered from frontal lobe brain damage potentially caused by fetal alcohol syndrome, which harmed his planning ability as an impulse control, and his lawyers long argued in court that he should be resentenced because his trial lawyer didn't adequately prepare for the sentencing phase of his trial. Okay. A federal judge rejected those claims, but a three-judge panel in the 11th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals agreed with Pye's lawyers in April of 2021. The case was reheard by the full federal appeal court, which overturned the panel's ruling in October of 2022. Then his co-defendant Adams now 55, pled guilty in April of 97 to charges of malice murder, kidnapping with bodily injury, armed robbery, R, and aggravated S. He was sentenced to five consecutive life prison terms and remains behind bars. So.
What the heck? Who is selling Sunset? Christine Quinn. Do you even know who that is? The husband of former Selling Sunset star Christine Quinn has been arrested on suspicion of assault with a deadly weapon after he allegedly threw an object that hit their two-year-old child. What? I don't even know who that is. No idea who that is. Trying to see what the heck is going on here. Fentanyl killer. Okay, let's see here. We're going to look at 10 much must watch Netflix shows for killer true crime documentaries. Let's see if there's anything we know. Amanda Knox, I've seen that a million times, right? American Nightmare, dubbed the real-life Gone Girl. American Nightmare recounts the harrowing ordeal of Denise Huskins and her boyfriend, Aaron Quinn, who were victims of a terrifying home invasion. That sounds good, American Nightmare, right? Directed by filmmakers Felicity Morris and Bernadette Higgins, this three-part series unravels the chilling events of the fateful night and the disbelief faced by the couple as they sought justice in the aftermath. American Nightmare. That sounds good. Let's see here. Um, bad vegan fame fraud fugitives. I think we saw that. Casting John Bonet, I believe we saw that. Girl in the picture, I know we saw that. Don't F with the cats, I know we saw that. Keep sweet, pray and obey, I know we just watched that recently. Lover, stalker, killer. Oh my goodness, we just watched that recently. Um, Murder on Murders, a Southern Scandal, we watched that. Okay, that was, uh, so the, the one there was American Nightmare or something. That's the only one that haven't watched that. If there's anything else. All right, I'm not seeing too much else. Hi, Sandra. Does not excuse his behavior for murder. That makes two. I don't know who she is either. <laughs> okay, you heard. It is a good watch, really, Sandra. I'll have to watch it. Maybe Painted Black will come in. You should become a member, and then you can come in Zoom and watch movies and stuff with us. Okay. So anyway, you think we should do our word cookies and then go to bed? I'm going to really try to get some more videos out earlier. With the auctions, it's hard. But we do what we can. Okay. 
on the top chat and not in live chat. That's silly of me. How silly of me. Got to do better. Okay. All right. Where is Painted Black? I gotta talk to her. All right. What is it? Genic? Genic? Ah, Genic. What? Icing? got that too. Okay. Um, Jenib? What? We have icing. Pinge. I tried that, I think. Hi, Emmy. How are you? 
G E N I uh oh G hold on G E N I no G E N I I Okay, good. Epic. Epic. E P I C. Epic. Very good. I think Tundra. I gotta go to bed. I am tired. I am tired. I am so tired. We'll play more tomorrow, okay? I love you guys. God bless. Prayers. I'll see you later. Thank you so much for watching the auction and watching this and coming around. And we appreciate every one of you. You're way more than numbers to us. Thank you so much. God bless. Prayers. We'll see you tomorrow. Be good.